There it is. Look at this yeah. magic man, dude. Yeah. Literally, it's like I plugged in my my earbuds in the microphone at like one second. I'm like, I'm very uncomfortable now. Hey, but I'm Kevin, here. Kevin, what's a con conquest taters? A what's a conquest taters? It's a, con it's a conquistador, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> French. French is a beautiful language, <laughs> isn't it? It is. This is in honor of the WWF tag team from the uh, 1980s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How is everyone doing? Ian wants to know. I'm doing I'm, good. I, I'm. This is my favorite time of the week. Yes. Um, we get to talk some craft beer and baseball. So um, I definitely uh, am excited. Um, yes. Oh, my brother. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Guess who? Be best, oh. best name ever. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I make some more decisions tonight. I'm ready. <laughs> Well, you've made a great decision to join us tonight because this is going to be a fun one. Oh, yes. As always. Right on. So let's do it. Welcome to another Tuesday night. This is the weekly Baseball Brew Crew podcast. We are a little bit country. We are a little bit lock and lull, keeping baseball history alive, one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching us live, please give us a like and a follow. Uh, if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend. And uh, some housekeeping before we start. Let's do it. Uh, we want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters for their incredible support. Um, these are the people that hopped on and believed in our craft beer and baseball experience. Let me, uh, I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to actually, I am one episode behind. So there we go. Update this really quickly. Booyah. And um, yeah, so these are the people that uh, we love. We couldn't do it without them. Uh, their support for our show every week uh, on our Patreon. Uh, we could not do this without you. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, you can become one for as low as $5 a month. Patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. Here is the lineup card for today. Unfortunately, our VP of content development, Angela Trinidad, is on vacation for two weeks. Lucky him, right? Jeez. We, we yeah. let him out of the dungeon, dude. <laughs> I can't get out of mine, though. Yes, you, you, you're, you, you have a lifelong contract. You, you have to be shackled to this hey, show. I've done it. Hey, I've done it on. I've done this show on vacation twice. All right. So, yes. Sick. Yes. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely, you bring the, you bring the craft beer, uh, we'll bring the baseball, right? <laughs> there it is. There it is. But next he's our field correspondent and senior research analyst. It is Kevin Lyon. Oh, that's, that beer is looking good. I, I'm sorry. I'm a little busy for my, my, uh, my very fall October E beer. So there we go. Yes. Cheers everybody. Hey, Scott Lost is here. Yeah, yes. yes <laughs> Your picture friend. Yes. Kevin would always get uh, uh, lambasted. Oh, well, well actually, it's <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, actually, take yeah. that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he drives them crazy, so that's why I'm never going to move it. Yeah, I, I just took a sip, sir. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm sober. Once I drink, then I talk more like a normal person. <laughs> this is your first sip um, uh, of tonight, uh, not for today, right? No, no, oh, no. Good, you, you can work all day. This is your. This is definitely your first beer. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm ready. Ooh, it's a good one too. <laughs> but hitting third is our goodwill ambassador and the Sultan of Swig. It is Cowboy Jack Durango. As I walk through the house on a Tuesday night, I take a look in the fridge and realize there's one beer left. Cause I've been drinking and laughing so long that even my mom would think that my mind is gone. But I ain't never drank a beer that I didn't deserve it. Me not getting drunk, you know that's unheard of. You better watch our show and like and subscribe or you and your homies might be lined in chalk. I really hate to trip, but I got a drink as the as they pour the pine, I see myself in the hazy pool. I'm the kind of cowboy the little homies want to be like on my knees in the night, chugging beers in the street light. <laughs> Being spending mo on Tuesday nights, living with the baseball brew crew. Pour a real one out for a real homie, Coolio, rest in power, sir. 
Let him hear it. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Coolio. Yeah. Love Coolio, it. Rest in power, man. Super influential in bringing hip hop to the mainstream for a trailer park, white trash kid like me. Great introduction to a wonderful world of music. And it's sad to see him go. Yeah. And now, Jack, as a result of all that, some say you're a songbird of our generation. <laughs> Voice of an angel, dude. I'm like Jesus what and angel? Fergie sing a song. <laughs> Jesus and Fergie combined. <laughs> yes, he's turning over in his rusty very great. Wow, coming in hot. Wow, hot coming tape. in hot. Wow. wow. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know we were going to heal on the star of the show, Scott, but let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, well um, bubble pug with the opposite. So inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> back at you, MVP. Back at you. Yes. So say Kevin is so well. Uh, yeah. Fred, well, uh, for a few more minutes, don't worry. <laughs> All right. So let's get into it. Uh, as tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So let's see. What you are drinking tonight, we're going to start with Cowboy Jack Durango. All right. So continuing my mission to spotlight local breweries born and bred in Arizona, today I'm talking about Wanderlust Brewing Company based in scenic Flagstaff, Arizona. Wanderlust makes traditional ales for the unexplored trails. A small northern Arizona microbrewery and taproom specializing in Belgian and German ales in addition to a variety of IPAs, pale ales, and other American styles. The on-site taproom features live music and food trucks on the weekends, and if they want to bring in a million-dollar house, they should book the baseball brew crew for a live show, daddy. <laughs> Wanderlust lives by their motto, not all who wander are drunk, but some might be. Uh, and the beer in question tonight is the Tropical Borealis. It's their take on one of uh, old Jackie Ballgame's favorite types of beers, the Juicy IPA. It features a heavy-handed edition of Mosaic, Idaho 7, and Amarillo Hops, supported by a simple background dryness imparted by a traditional Norwegian farmhouse yeast strain. Mango, papaya, passion fruit mingle with tangerine with just a hint, a smidge, a pinch of pine, baby, to complete this pungent, complex hop profile. Sip after sip will give you a wave of tropical fruit as you gaze into the night sky. Wow. Wow. Cowboy Check Jack. it out. Yes, sir. I have, a, I have a question. Are those Amarillo hops from the Double Cross Ranch? <laughs> they are the double cross amarillo hops yes sir. Ah, yes thank you very good to know ah this is good and and wh where is this at this is up north flagstaff okay up in oh, flagstaff okay. and, it's, and it's not downtown it's it's off the beaten path they've got like a big dog patio they've got just cool 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 place to get away and uh they've got a big room and i'm uh i'm gonna tell them they need to bring us in for a live show that's nice yeah I think, um, can, I think we can all use a flagstaff getaway <laughs> weekend right yeah for sure there's a lot of uh breweries up there like in williams and flagstaff it's actually yes, there's sir. there's i was really surprised when i went up there it's been a while it's probably been like three or four oh. years uh, since what else there. what else do people do up there is there there's nothing really to see up there right well it's funny oh, that you say that because it's so gorgeous up there man. yeah I mean, it's 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 like the uh, tonto forest yeah i'm kidding is that, isn't yeah. that where the Bear Park is? That uh, Top Gun Tower? Oh, that Arizona. 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 Yeah, there you go. that's over in yeah, that's over in Williams. So yeah, it's about thirty minutes uh, east of this brewery. Yeah, my my girlfriend, uh, she if she could buy like season tickets to anything, it would be Arizona, um, <laughs> and she uh, would like to move there and <laughs> and and live with the oh. bears. Which um, oh. these days I, I'm kind of considering as well. So um, yeah, so it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> and with all the breweries up there, it, it's sounding uh, more inviting every I single mean, day. Some say yeah. her brother is a cub. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, and I don't, I don't know if you can see their logo right there. Their little, lo dude, that's such a cool little simple 
just logo and i just it makes me think of the old song big rock candy mountain oh yeah um, it, from oh brother where art thou and give me some bro lives yeah <laughs> baby scott knows what's up Oh, yes, <laughs> he knows a pair when he sees one. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, this oh, is your oh. beer and very seasonal to say the least. <laughs> I, I didn't see that picture. That is that is a fantastic picture. Although that oh, pumpkin really? is very uh, overdressed. I'd yes, say. I agree. I agree. You know, uh, so this is a brewery I've heard of before. I remember trying this brewery in Pittsburgh, and someone gave me one of these. It's called the Pumpkin because you know it's that time of year. So like, hey, you know what? Why not get this? So this is a, a imperial ale. It comes in at a eight point six. So after the, I only have one of these, unfortunately. So I will have another beer ready on the side after that. And uh, so it actually it's described as pumpkin pie in a bottle. Mm. Make sure I see anything else here. Yeah, yeah, he says it right there. There he is, pumpkin pie in a bottle and everything. And uh, so it says pumpkin puree and pie spices, malty, bready, cinnamon dominates with nutmeg and vanilla in the background. And this is an East Coast brewery out of New York, and they must have got some great new distributorship because this is the first time this has ever been on the West Coast. And they also make, they also have an Imperial uh, pumpkin stout that's out right now. And get ready for this, a pumpkin whiskey that you can buy. Oh, yes. I, I actually found that before I found this. So I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, they're really yeah, going all, end all cap, out. I, at my local total wine, there's like a total uh, end cap of just all this different things that Southern Tier got. I'm like, whoa. What's Southern Tier doing? Uh, I, like I said, I thought they were from like Pittsburgh area because that's where I had them before. But nope, East Coast, New York Brewery. And now, great way for them to invade West. And this is a, I, you know, this is a really good, you know, pumpkin ale here for sure. It, there's nice. a reason why it's called the Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Love it. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. You're so you're so basic, dude. You're drinking pumpkin spice beer. <laughs> Come no, on now. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie in a bottle. It's It's October. I can do it. Yeah, well, I I was going it's to have eight, six, Jack. Don't worry, it's an eight six. Good man. Oh yeah. There you go. There you go. I'm messing around. <laughs> <laughs> you never you know do, that. buddy. You That's never right. do. Yeah, I was going to have a uh, October inspired beer, uh, but I saw this one. I'll, I'll save it for for next week. Um, but I saw this beer uh, yesterday, and uh, of course, it's baseball theme, so I had to get it. It oh, is the Halo Light from Ooh. Brewery X. 5% ABV, 40 IBU, and the only description I can find of it legitimately was light beer for Angel Stadium. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but wait, so, did you get this at Angel Stadium? I did not. I did not. Oh, they, okay. They, so I'm just wondering because that doesn't make any sense then. Yeah. So uh, I guess. But I like you know, the logo. That's a cool. I like the logo though. It's nice. It's very good if you're an Angels fan, which there might be a couple left. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, su super light. Um, uh, oh, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, Brewery X is oh, yeah. becoming one of my favorites. They've definitely, so. they've definitely got a lot of traction. And I saw their their place is gigantic. I know we were trying to go there, like, I think twice we never ended up going up there. But if you're in, like, the uh, – if you're in Anaheim, uh, the whole area there with, like, four or five breweries, and they're open to, like, midnight, seven days a week. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then they have their own food and stuff like yeah. that. Like, uh, And uh, so that's kind of rare as well. Um, and yeah, we're and, fans uh, of their seltzers too. So. <laughs> Scott, not even being a baseball fan, weak beer yeah. for a weak team. Wow. Good, but he still says good stuff. Wow. Good stuff. What is Joe? Do you think his joke is good stuff or the beer is good stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I think the branding. It's, excuse me. No, AAA just ended. I don't have my hat here, but the Durham Bulls are champions. I know at the International League. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, this is a, a super um, super light lager, and uh, it's it's uh, really easy drinking. Uh, probably great for a, a summer uh, afternoon of baseball. Um, but I'm sure the Angels uh, themselves are are glad that the season is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least yeah, but this, got his money. You know. Right, right, and. Uh, and and uh, yeah, that's uh so what's this, important, this, dude. That's what's yeah, important. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's in, a business. In the end, it's, it's a, a business. <laughs> uh, in the, and this will go. This this can will definitely go on on my um my back wall with all my bobbleheads. I have all my baseball beer cans. So uh, with my Eddie Murray, um, yes. uh, and my uh, ones from uh, the Dodger ones from the Chavez Ravine can, IPA. Now, is there is there wings on that pitcher? Is that a wing yes, I'm seeing? There is, no. Absolutely. <laughs> Goodness. I was wondering, I was trying to see if it was like inspired by it. It was supposed to be like a Nolan Ryan or someone like that. I couldn't, it was just a basic, okay. 
Yeah. Gotcha. So it's 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 got a it's got a cool look to it. Um but yeah, I don't know if you can get this in cans yeah. or um or, or on draft at, at I don't Angel remember game. I don't remember seeing that can before. Every angel game I went to, there was a different uh they had an IPA called uh slap and tickle, I think is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen that right. at the ballpark, but I never saw this, which I was surprised I would have had one. Yeah, um, I, I saw some pictures on Untapped that people had the can, so it's probably available somewhere. Maybe, it's, maybe. well, if, if anybody goes to Angel Sam, they're a Brewery X fan, they have a restaurant on the uh, third level, the club level in right field area. They yeah, and I think, that area, I think which it's surprisingly enough, the Ontario well. Airport of all places as well. Yeah. But which, yeah. Su surprisingly enough, that restaurant is uh, more successful than the team. Okay. <laughs> that's probably true and it's uh but i, I don't know I, it could be debatable and who who would want to go to uh, angel stadium to eat <laughs> yeah no kidding but i dude i bet they i bet it's like nestled in there and you can like there's an opening to see the game there is well. we went yeah, yeah michael and i went there it used to be a st archers and i, I think right. that, it seems like honestly jack i don't know how well that thing's been doing because it seems like it's changed like ideas and themes like, like two or three times in the last five years so yeah yeah yeah. Um, and, and Scott says he's had a, uh, like five beers from there. Yeah, they, they, they're they super diverse. And, uh, and, I, and not, well, is that, uh, Scott, does that include the seltzers? Because I know the seltzers they make are pretty right. good too. And those are like 10% seltzers. So, yowza. Oh, yeah. I will. <laughs> yeah, Kevin and I usually when we go to games, we sit right on top. We can see everything and yeah. overlooking uh, Anaheim. Yeah. And he says, yeah. Um, uh, but they're also, um, I also know we were talking about it, Kevin. Like we we kind of think of like Brewery X as like uh, I said it was it reminded me of of Golden Road Brewing yes. before they well, uh, sure. got taken over. Uh, for sure. So um, they they're kind of have the same model. I think. I think, I think yeah. I think they're just looking to like someone has some money invest it. I think they're trying to just get big enough to where they can get bought by a bigger bigger conglomerate. Yeah. I think that's their that end sense. goal. As opposed to a lot of other breweries, they're like, yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. Just having our our cool, our cool local spot, and just make beers and just be successful that way. Yeah, yeah but like, and they also have they also have a beer uh, for the Anaheim Ducks as well, yes, right? Yes, they, yeah, they do. So they're Fishing they're really kind of hone in on on that oh, market. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into it. This is this day in baseball history for October fourth. Let me uh, over do already, this really quickly. There we go. All right, October fourth, nineteen oh six. The Cubs post their 116th victory when they beat Pittsburgh at Exposition Park 4 to nothing. Chicago, who sets a major league mark for wins, completes the season with an astounding 763 winning percentage. But Jack, I yes, know sir. what you're I know what you're saying, right? No, you what can about read my mind. 2001 Seattle Mariners. <laughs> exactly. They had 116 wins. How did the Cubs in 1906 have uh, have a better winning percentage? Well, you know, I, I would have to say it would be shorter seasons. Well, wow, actually, they, ten more games. They actually played ten more games than um, the, than the, the Cubs. Cubs. Yeah, the There's Cubs a, had a shorter it, season. Good That's job. right, just by ten games. And, hey, hey, oh. and look, but look where it got them. Yes. At, to to quote my my baseball sensei, dude, even the even the games in April count. Oh, it's oh, it's whoa. a numbers game. Yes, I, I, I I was communing with my baseball sensei today, and I picked that nugget up. You know what? Uh, <laughs> some might say, you know, in our in our in our baseball league, Cowboy Jack might be the nineteen oh six Cubs. Yes, except they might lose the World Series to, to Michael Mondragon. <laughs> right, dude. Right. <laughs> If if uh, if if the baseball guys will have it, uh, I will I will gladly take the win. But I I think I think I'm going to tie and lose. Actually, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, if he wins, if he does that twice, yeah. So he's advanced yeah. twice and ties uh, because he's a, the higher seed. Uh, but hey, they reward the season. There you go. Hey, like hey man, like you said, it's a numbers game, baby. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the games back in April count, bro. There that's you like, go. Let's go. It's all intertwined. Yes, all right. every all game right. counts. Every game counts. All right, October fourth, nineteen forty-eight. Joe DiMaggio becomes the first major leaguer to appear on a Time magazine cover for the second time, featured in an article titled "The Big Guy." which details the center fielder's injury woes during the final week of the American League pennant race. 
Um, well, um, if you, if you look back to the, uh, the, the Yankee Clipper first appeared on the popular magazine cover on July 13th, 1936, during his rookie season. Wow. And um, cool let's picture. just say his picture wasn't that great. That is a, <laughs> no, bro, that is a cool picture, man. I dig it. You know what, Michael Mondragon, how many times be on the cover of Time magazine, all right? Yes, it's a, I, I I shouldn't be laughing, but I am. But, yeah, but when when, when you were on it, you were on it. Your picture was really handsome. It was so good. I, and, I get it. Yeah. And it, I wasn't was swinging through a strike. Um, and, and I don't I don't even know if that's the plate right there. Um, what those legs are? It's like I know exactly. Where, like the guy's legs like, get twisted, and he just spins around uh, in circles. He was he was trying to like he was trying to invent a viral dance much like either the macarena or gangnam style and it didn't take off you can't blame a guy for trying though wow. right michael wow. to put in proper yes. perspective for time perspective he's trying to audition for a busby berkeley musical wow right? we go to wow. the 1930s for you we have right? lost the crowd with that that's reference. right that's right i just did for you i'm trying to talk to those people who were around the 1930s like i was all right Jeez. Uh, I remember you have to, you were uh, Kevin was very popular back at, back in those days. Um, you know he had to beat the women off the running boards. <laughs> that is that's a deep cut. It's a very deep. Cut. <laughs> that is wild stuff. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I didn't have to ask you. To say it. Thank you. Hey, I wonder who Kevin. You'll probably know this offhand. Who was the first baseball player on Time Magazine? Not Jolton Joe. I, I would probably guess Babe Ruth. Solid guess, dude. I don't know. I was oh, I thought you. I'm like, oh, okay. Was it, wasn't it this? I'm just like, is it Joe DiMaggio? I'm like, is it Joe DiMaggio? You would be like, yeah, that's a good guess too. I totally would have agreed too. <laughs> I would have been like, you're right, bro. I should have said, I just said uh, like three fingers Mordecai Brown. You were like, there you go. Oh, exactly. that's it. How'd you know? Like, I would have popped huge, dude. I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big three finger fan. Bro. I know you are. I should have. I, <laughs> Yeah, okay, Jack. <laughs> October 4th, 1955, after more than a half century of futility, the Dodgers finally win a world championship thank to, thanks to Johnny Padres. Uh, two to nothing shutout of the Yankees in the Bronx. The turning point of the historic contest proves to be an outstanding catch by defensive replacement Sandy Aramos in the sixth inning that robs Yogi Berra of an extra base hit with two on, resulting in a rally-robbing double play. So, damn bums uh, yeah, getting it done in 1955. Well, if I'm correct, if you heard last week's show, we talked about who the manager would be of this team, right, Cowboy Jack? Yeah, he went to Arizona State University. <laughs> so close. So close. That'd be Walter Alston, sir. We Walter talked about Walter. appearing in a game never and never even making it to the plate in his only game. The guy I'm most curious about, though, is the guy in the white shirt on the far yes, left. Yes. Like, I'm looking at him going, that's the guy who's going. He was a bus driver, bro. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. It looks like he's got, it looks like he's getting ready to threaten those Yanks. Like, he wins, oh, no. going to pay the price. No. Yeah, with the, with those cauliflower ears, brother was surely connected, dude. Oh, but yeah, he was the bus driver. <laughs> yeah, bus driver. I thought been the other guy on the far right with his glasses on. I thought he'd be exactly. the bus driver. <laughs> yes, that, that that that's a party group for oh, sure. It is. All right, so October Ben, ben Stein is in that picture. Ben Stein. <laughs> ben Stein. Second <laughs> row, far right. Okay. <laughs> wow. The guy got good eyes. Glasses. Yeah, I said that's the bus driver, and you went and apparently that's Ben Stein, the bus driver. Hey, hey man, right. it's been a long day, bro. Okay. I understand. October 4th, 1969, the Orioles defeat Minnesota in game two of the American League Championship Series, one to nothing, with the lone run coming on a Mark Belanger single two ground outs and a bunt single by Paul Blair in the bottom of the 11th inning at Memorial stadium. Dave McNally goes a distance in the longest complete game shutout of postseason history. So he pitched all 11 innings, uh, which is kind of like unheard of these days. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm kidding. 
But meanwhile, in the National League, the Mets beat the Braves 9-5 to in the first ever National League Championship Series playoff game. The eventual world champions will sweep Atlanta in the best-of-five game series before confronting the Orioles in the Fall Classic. And uh, what was uh, the nickname for the uh, Mets that year, Cowboy Jack? Uh, magnificent Mets. Close. <laughs> that's, close. that's that's close that's actually close. Close. kevin oh i oh you really want the answer yeah <laughs> okay sure the miracle mets the miracle mets or the amazing mets right i, I would have accepted that as well yes I and uh and, and uh ed yes properly tom terrific tom siever An- another right? player that we talked about so much on this show I mean, we've talked. I feel like we talked to him. Him and Steve Carlton seem to be like the pitchers we talk about the most, and then Nolan Ryan, of course. But yes. I tell you, that's the upper echelon of uh, baseball pitchers. Yes, absolutely. All right, October fourth, nineteen eighty. The seventeen to one thrashing of the Twins becomes a very historic day for Willie Wilson. He uh, slides on the astroturf uh, during a rain delay. No, that uh, the oh, Royals outfielder becomes the first big league player credited with 700 at bats in one season sets the American league record for singles in a season with 184 and joins Gary Templeton becoming the second switch hitter in history to collect 100 hits from each side of the plate. Wow. Big day. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I was like, wait, I want to see if I was right. Cause I was thinking that sounds really well. <laughs> I made the guy well. So that's an amazing photo. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fantastic I, photo. I, I love, I love <laughs> the slip it. Why didn't Slip and Slide buy that image, dude? <laughs> Just, yeah, no kidding. He should have been their spokesman. <laughs> exactly. October 4th, 2001, Barry Bonds ties Mark McGuire's single, se- single season home run record with an established, uh, he had established three years ago when he hits his 70th round tripper. Wow, we were talking about uh, uh, Aaron Judge today doing 62. Yes. uh, uh Bond uh, yeah. with 70 here. The wow. historic homer is shot off um, to right center at Enron Field. I forgot in Houston, oh, it used oh, to be God. Enron Field. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, given up uh, in the ninth inning by Astro rookie hurler Wilfredo Rodriguez in a giant 10 to 2 victory. Also on that day, hitting his third home run, Ricky Henderson ties Ty Cobb's what? mark to become the leading run scorer in baseball history. The 42-year-old Padres outfielder slides into home plate, a home plate to punctuate scoring the record 2,246th run. Amazing. He looked like Willie and Wilson our- doing it. Yeah, yes, he did. I wish it was. Um, and uh, one of our favorites, uh, Alex Rodriguez, scoring the lone run in the Texas Rangers 16-1 loss favorite. to Seattle, oh, yeah. uh, his, his former team. Hits his 52nd home run, becoming the fourth major leaguer to hit 100. I'm sorry, to hit 50 home runs and 200 hits in the same season. So a big wow. day um, in 2001. Hey, dude, hey, Rod. If not only Mr. Gift Basket himself, dude. If I, um, <laughs> that's, that's not him. That's an that's another uh, Yankee favorite. That's, that's I, well, I'm guy. sure. I'm you. You can't tell me that a Rod hasn't his gift baskets were full of jewelry, bro. Like, come on. <laughs> Well, Come on. I, saw, I saw I saw some social media business of uh, a girl on Southern Charm that broke up him and uh, him and J Lo. So he was leaving <laughs> gift baskets, brother. Was it Alex Rodriguez with Tori Wilson, or am I thinking somebody else? I don't remember for sure. Was oh it, um, no, that was, was um, that was uh, Mordecai Three Finger Brown. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're right. I would say George Sisler to tie in with your message there in the chat. You know, yep. Should have should have said George Sisler. Yeah, I should have said George Sisler. So with that 50 home runs, 200 hits, uh the A-Rod joins Hall of Famers Babe Ruth in 21, Hack Wilson in 1930, and Jimmy Fox in 1932 and accomplishing the rare feat. Look at that. Um, it was, it's 70 years before someone did it again. That crazy. Wow. Crazy. October 4th, 2003 at Pro Player Stadium, a stadium named after underwear. Yes, it's true. <laughs> nice. uh, Jeff Conine's perfect peg to catcher Ivan Pudge Rodriguez, who holds the ball at in collision at home, advances the Marlins to the National League Championship Series, which they would play the Cubs. Steve Bartman happens, and uh, Florida goes on to win the World Series against the Yankees that year. 
But in this game, the Florida's outfielders throw uh, nails JT Snow trying to score on a Jeffrey Hammond single uh, for the final out in the team's seven to six victory over the Giants. Um, after I mean, after this play happened, he, he like holds the ball like ah, like, ah, I did it or whatever. And there's like bobblehead of it and everything. Dude, that is a I, violent, violent picture. Yeah. Which is when brother, you can actually yeah. hit uh, have home yeah. plate collisions. Yeah, brother is folded up like an accordion. Yep. Yes. Yes. I'm a little but, disappointed with one thing. You didn't mm. say his name properly. It's Jeff Conine the Barbarian to use. Conine. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. A little Chris Bermanism. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's where I got John Cotton Candelaria. Yeah. Or uh, there's, they, uh, he had so it, many. Good excuse ones. me. It's like more like John Cottonmouth Candelaria. You just you saw what he <laughs> yeah, was doing off the field. I mean, come on. I like that a lot. Man. That's not what they did call him. They, they yeah. changed it. <laughs> for sure but um ivan rodriguez is not um he's not shy uh to uh <laughs> to destroy himself oh. and this picture will tell oh, you the story geez. right here <laughs> what a great why, picture this is why is that guy it looks excited more than like and yeah he's, right? he's, he's giving the thumbs up dude. <laughs> like, yeah this guy's gonna kick me in the face <laughs> yolo yeah. like yeah <laughs> Come on, that's a work, brother. It's like you know, no one's watching. That's like the old roller derby gimmick. You know what I mean? Photo, when you also dude, that's get in there. No, no, no. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. You might be. You just hit, cut him out and Photoshop him in different instances. He's getting thumbs the, up. The, the, the pixels situation. don't match, dude. Like, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Look at the shadows. That's right. Exactly. So uh, that this is the, uh, this day in baseball. Thank you so much for that. We're gonna move on to uh, our next segment which is Baseball Card oh, Sharks. Man. Yeah, we haven't played this in a while. Uh, here are the Baseball Card Sharks standing. We have a, a tie up top between Kevin and myself. Uh, Angelo just uh, mere percentage points over Cowboy Jack, but you can actually make up some ground right here. Oh, right. Cowboy I could. Jack with a win. Or you could slip into the abyss or with a loss. I could <laughs> oh. fall. Oh. <laughs> or I could tumble down a flight of stairs <laughs> like somebody needing to go to the retirement home. Would You're you like right. me to turn on the light in the cellar? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd rather land in the darkness where I belong. Sea <laughs> <Who's> boy. Well, <laughs> uh, Ed wants to who's Sea boy. <laughs> hey, it's 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 B boy's less talented cousin though. <laughs> <laughs> C- oh, the is kicked in. in. There's a the on a, a Tim and Eric uh the very first episode there's one that says uh, C- there was a a, a character called Seaboy uh, and it says Seaboy yeah. is short for cowboy. So oh, that's yeah. there you go. Seaboy <laughs> is short for cowboy. Um <laughs> so here are the baseball card sharks rules. Uh we draw 11 cards, uh baseball cards with stats on them and uh, th- uh eight go on the board. Three on your bench. Uh, we start from the bottom. We pick a category and uh, we wake, mar- make our way to the top and uh, we'll walk you through it as we always do. So let me uh, get rid of this really. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to add this. Um, give me a second here as I need to. Sorry, I'm just having another beer. There we go. Yes, sir. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, let's pick a category. We have pitchers uh, this week. Um, so what, um, what is a category? What is a category we want? Uh, what, wins, what, losses, what, strikeouts. What year are the cards? Uh, all over, all over, all retired oh. players. Oh, all retired oh, so we might have some players. senior league cards. All right. Yes. I think because Cowboy, because I think because you two were the top. Well, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not even going to fist this up too. But for the winners of this league, let's go with wins for Cowboy Jack. He's the regular season yeah. winner. Sounds good. Leave it at that. Sounds good. Thank Who you. wants to go first? Me, of course, dude. The return right. of the champ. <laughs> return of the champ. All right, here we go. <laughs> Jack's trying to get in the third place by himself. Come on, Jack. That's right. Come on now. So our first up, Pedro Martinez. That's a pretty card. Yes. Chrome card. Steve Carlton, a These favorite are, oh, of the year. Uh-oh. Of the- Bro, love me, love me some lefty Carlton, brother. There you go. <laughs> Please, if you could, dude, set that card aside from for me, dude. I would love that's I would love that. You got it. You got it. Uh former Arizona Diamondback, I remember, but here he's a tiger. This is Jose Valverde. It's like 
solid name, dude. Yes. Yeah. We're all like <laughs> Mariano Rivera. <laughs> Mar- Why Mar- does it? Is Marinara that photoshopped? Rivera. His head looks so much smaller than the than his like the rest of his body. Yeah, it does a little bit. <laughs> it's it, like, what does it match? Does the background look like a bad school photo from the? That's <laughs> exactly what it is. I mean, look at Steve Carlton. It's the same thing. It's just it's just looks better with Carlton. Jack Morris. Wow, really Jack idea, right? tougher than Chuck Norris. <laughs> Roy Halladay. Oh, I remember him. Yep. Oh, oh well, Jack remembers him. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. we were, I was trying to remember this guy's name. He, I, he almost pitched like back to back, like no hitters. Um, he pitched a no hitter. Then the next game he pitched really outstanding. This is Mark Burley. Oh yeah. Wow. He also has like one of the craziest, like I, I, you'd have to look it up, but, uh, it's like he threw it, but behind him threw his legs, like to first base. It's like yeah, one of the most amazing insane. plays. It was an yeah. insane play out there. Um, and then we end up with Warren Spawn. Oh jeez, wow. Warren Spawn. Man, wow. I can, I would think in 2020, what year is that card? Because look how off center it is for like a night a current card. Yeah, this Jeez, is. You think like because his better, face you know. is slanted, dude. Yeah. Like, oh, his, sorry. His <laughs> noggin's on an angle, brother. <laughs> so on your bench, it is uh, Nolan Ryan. Oh, you that upstart, dude. Dennis Eckersley, another upstart, another solid mullet, and one of your favorites. Randy Johnson. Oh, yeah, man. Man, the how big, many Hall of Famers are on this the, board? The big container, Randy Johnson. I think all I but it. like I think you have everybody but Burley and, and uh Valverde. And, yeah, everybody else is a Hall of Famer. Yep. Wow. That's nice. Have fun, Jack. <laughs> so we're gonna start with Pedro Martinez, and he oh has goodness. 219 wins. 219. Career wins. Yes, sir. Career wins. So, Steve it. Carlton, higher or lower? Lefty's lower, bro. I mean, lefty's way higher, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my audio, my audio cut out. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're 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 lucky. My 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 feed is glitchy. Um, yeah, 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 I know it glitched. There's a, there's a ghost <laughs> in the machine. Bro. I'm glad he could read that. That was like the record scratch. We're like, what? <laughs> I can't believe I lost it on lefty. Bro. You know why? It's but, because no, I said higher. So- what are you talking about? You say he's higher. You said he's higher. So 329. 329. Wow. Well job, done. Jack. Yeah. Good job, Jack. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's Jose Valverde, higher or lower? Okay. Yeah, a lower. Okay. Lower. I'll say, if you say higher, I'm not giving you that mulligan. <laughs> 27, 27 for Jose Valverde. He literally has 300 more wins. Jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, Juan Rivera. No. Juan Rivera. Uh, Ron Rivera. <laughs> no. Ron Rivera. Uh, <laughs> That's 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 Marinara Rivera, dude. Marinara Rivera. Marinara no. Rivera. Higher, lower. Higher than twenty-seven. I would think so. Not a lot though. He's got kind of not a lot. Um, he actually has eighty-two. Yeah, eighty-two. Not a lot. Yeah. Eighty-two. All right. Uh, a lot more saves. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you've you've defined this for me many a times in the past, and I yeah. am. Willie Nelson mode a lot of the time, so I don't retain it. <laughs> Explain to me career wins. So, okay, a win is you, you as as a starting pitcher, you have to go at least five innings um, to actually win a game. So, like if you do four and two thirds, you can't win the game. So when the when the next pitcher comes in, um, if say you did four and two thirds, and the next pitcher comes in. Uh, say it's a tie game and uh, pitches that one out, that pitcher becomes the pitcher of record and say they score 10 runs and then they win the game. So th- that second pitcher gets the, gets the, cur- gets the win. Right. Got it. Understood. Or um, in, in the later innings, um, it could be a tie ball game and then someone, um, you know, gets, gets a hit or something like that. And the team wins the game. Whoever the pitcher of record was at the time gets the like, win. Let's say Mario Rivera pitched the yes. top of the ninth in a tie game. Yes. The Yankees win the game at the bottom of the ninth. He pitched the ninth. He wins go. the game. Yeah. 
And weirdly, losses are different because I just had this happen to me on my fantasy league. I I had someone who who at the beginning of the game, oh, if he did it for the Pirates, he he only he only got two outs, was taken out of the game, but yet lost the game. Yes. So you don't have to like pitch the whole game to lose because he had runners on base. Yeah. So he he would be the uh, the pitcher on record for those runners on base. Yeah. Jack okay. is Jack is done. Jack's tapping. No, yeah, no, no. yeah, it's a lot. Well, it's a lot to take in. That's a lot of information. So it, no, no. I mean, like, just math. Like, if I'm understanding this correctly, I would say that relief pitchers statistically have more wins than starting pitchers. No. No. No, okay. sir. Other way around. Right. Got Other it. Way around. Just, my equation was flipped. Well, well Got did, it. did you? Well, did you listen to that? The, the amount of wins. Mauro Navarro is one of the greatest relievers of all time. He had 84 wins. Is that the number, Mongo? 82. 82. But meanwhile, he and then you had Steve Carlton who had 330 or yeah. whatever it was. Got it. Yeah. And now you're up against Jack Morris. So what do you think, Cowboy Jack? Does Jack Morris have yes. higher or lower than 84? 82. Uh, 82, sorry. Uh, you know what? Let's go. Ah, let's go higher. Let's go yeah, higher. You're fine. I would think so. He has like 275. I don't know. Uh wins. Uh 254. Sorry. Very close, actually. Off. Wow. I realized I went a little high on that. 254. This is a tough one, though. This is the one I was looking at going. Maybe. So Roy Halladay, you you got Jack. higher or lower? Than yeah, him. I remember Halladay was a heck of a ball player when you guys were discussing him. Um, mm-hmm. Shoot, because I've seen this card before. Um, goodness sakes, let's go higher. Let's roll the dice. And I roll the dice you have. Dice. And he has 203. Ouch. Unfortunately, uh, cut down. Um, was before. he still active when he died? I want to say yes. But, I don't remember um, sure. But, but he I'm actually not died sure. in a plane crash. He was yeah. like, oh, no. Was it like a yeah. hydro? What kind of, it was like some kind of like. It was like a hybrid plane. Hybrid I think. Plane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like. It's like an was, experimental plane. Or, I think he, it, was. it was nuts. Because he's one of those guys who'd be flying a plane. At a great speed of rate and would turn literally before you go to the ocean. Yeah. And he didn't turn in time and he died. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. So too, um and, and, too bad and he, he couldn't was... too bad he couldn't no sell that plane crash like Mr. Wrestling Tim Woods. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no sell it. Wow. <laughs> wow, indeed. Thank, oh, there it is. All right. Hey, so... hey Jack, you that you did better than usual. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't mess up once, dude. No, yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You made it to the second row. No one, no, I mean, I don't know. I, my monitor went out during the first car, so I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, said well, higher, te- right? technical issues, dude. Technical yeah. issues. All right, so Kevin, here's yes, your cards. Sir. I'm ready. The Rocket, Roger Clemens. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh no. Chin Ming Wing. Oh gee. <laughs> Chin Ming Wing. That's a real ball player. It is. Okay. It is. I'm just asking. Uh, why, why, why do you ask, Kevin? Randy Jones. All right. Randy. Randy Jones. Here we go. As opposed to Randy Johnson. <laughs> uh, Catfish Hunter. Hunter. Why, why is he called Catfish? Cowboy Jack. Uh, he uh, to, to strengthen his pitching arm he would uh wade out into rivers and he would catch catfish with his bare hands you know what don't buzz him i think that's a better answer i thought he would get <laughs> it probably is i saw your hand move like no that's not I like saw it too, <laughs> like, come on i like that answer i thought he was gonna go for a modern day catfish prove me know. wrong bro yeah prove that's true. Wrong. that's true we can't uh, prove it wrong don sutton oh okay and last but not least Tom Glavin. Oh, wow. Okay. I was pretty confident until I saw Glavin. All right. Yeah. Let's power through this board. You ready? Let's do it. Uh, all right. Roger Clemens, 354. Wow, he has that many. 354 wow. and not that's a like, Hall of Famer. <laughs> that's he, like, he lo- I think he looks that's like, like fifth or sixth all time. Wow. He looked uh, in that picture, he looked like the inspiration of Bull Hurley from over the top. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, out. his son. His son plays in the major leagues right now. Cody Clements. Oh, I didn't huh. even know that. Um, I did not. I did not, I did know, not that. know that. Uh, Chen Ming Wang. Wow, higher or lower right. than three fifty four? Right oh. off the bat, dude. He might go out, ladies and gentlemen. Cross your fingers. <laughs>
I'm going to go, I think, 350 games lower. <laughs> 350 wins lower. Uh, 68. Oh, 68. Man. Wow, I never heard this guy. He has 68. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Randy Jones, higher this, or this, lower? This actually might be harder than I thought. Wow. I'll say higher. I'll say higher, but he might have like 75. <laughs> oh, you know what? He has a hundred. I thought he had a lot more. No, I was like thinking I didn't. I was like, he probably has a hundred ish. Wow. Yeah. And he, the way he read num- that. I'm like, don't you tell me that. He oh, that wow. Yeah. His that numbers retired with the Padres. So uh, he was like one of their uh, big franchise players right. at the beginning. So right. this, yeah, this might be hard. <laughs> you you, you delivered you delivered that news like the doctor from Arrested Development. Yeah, he bro. Really like, yes. I'm like, no, no, no. I no. thought it was over, bro. Well, it, it's like, nope, he's not here. No, he left a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's say, Mr. Jim, I dig for catfish with my bare hands. Hunter, yes, has over 200, so definitely higher. Okay. Like and the number is like wins 224. Nicely 24. done. All right. 224. Uh, Don Sutton. Kevin, you can go to your bench, brother. Well, I was actually at the game in Anaheim, California. I want to say 1986, where Don Sutton won his 300th win. So I know for a fact that he has more than 300. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he has. <laughs> Okay. He has 324. Yep. 324 for Don Sutton. Oh, yeah. Look at Kevin. I moved. No. I was in a historic Ooh. game. I don't know. It's, it's, this one's com- It's going to be tough here, though. This is tough, but I'll still say lower. So I, think, lower. I don't think he has 300. I don't think he has 300. I might be wrong. Uh oh. You said down. lower? Yes, sir. Oh, 305. Wow. Oh. I didn't know he had 300. Holy cow. 305. All right, we're not to walk in the park dude. from here. That one was harder than I thought it was going to be. All right. Yep. Oh, Mark no, Mark, really? All right. Do I joke or do I just walk through this? Because it's, <laughs> it's a walk in the park from here. Let me just pick up a ball between my legs and throw it. How do you do it? Find <laughs> the, the leg, find the back. Uh, Mark Burley is lower. Yeah. Yeah, it's an easy call. Uh, 214 wow. for Mark Burley. 214. Oh, my God. That's a yep. really impressive number, actually. And then Warren Spawn. But not as impressive. Warren Spawn who has like 366 or something like that. It's close. Nice. But 363. Like- Nicely done. Wow. wow. That's well impressive. Well done, dude. Holy dude. cow. Kevin. Yes, sir. Full rain man tonight, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, I All saw right. that board and I knew if I can get by Tom Glavin, I was good. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Good luck. Uh, I know you're counting on oh, me, right? Hal Newhouse wow. from the Detroit Tigers. That's a, that's um, a guard. So we have. I think that's 53 on. tops inspired. I want to say it was a year. Yeah. Might be wrong on that. Okay. Um, Doc Gooden. Oh yeah. Doc Gooden. That's a tough Doc. matchup right away. This Jeez. Is tough, right, Mister Three One Three and the <laughs> Doctor, bro. Okay. Jared Weaver. All right. Jared Weaver. Solid mullet, dude. Yeah. No, this is a pretty, this is not an easy board so far, Michael. What happened? Sandy Koufax. Oh. 75 nice style. 75, yep. Bob Feller in the 79 Jeez. style. Michael. I know. I guess they just gave his rig looking at this board. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to take on this board. So Bob Gibson. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. I know. This is, this is going to be a rough one. Yeah. You have three Hall of Famers in a row right there. Barry Zito. Wow. That's a solid bad. mullet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And last but not least, this is Greg Maddox. Oh, if you get to Greg Maddox, you'll be good, Michael. <sighs> I hope so. I, I mean, I don't know. That's this is a really tough this board. Is, this is a tough board. So um Hal Newhauser actually has 207 wins. Wow. Oh. I know the name, but um, yeah, yeah, I definitely I don't know, know who he is. I don't anything else that he did. Yeah. Now, obviously, two or seven wins. I mean, geez, that'd be like near Hall of Fame level nowadays. So Doc Gooden uh, didn't have as many, but I, I'm sure he has quite a few. Uh, career, uh, career cut short, I think. Uh, right? He didn't pitch as much as he should have, but I'll, I'll definitely say lower. 
Oh man, that's gonna be close still. I don't know. One ninety four. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was I was cutting it close. Dude, I would have I would have put the doctor of thugonomics over 200 for sure. <laughs> I didn't I didn't think that he had 200, but um but yeah, I, I didn't think it was gonna be close. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So Jared even this, Weaver. Even this one, I'm like, uh, Jared, yeah, Jared Kid Rock Weaver. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I love Jared Weaver because he came to the Cardinals in 2006 uh, and he actually helped them win a World Series that year. Yeah. So uh, I, I like him a lot. And uh, But I will definitely say lower. I'm going to say wins, lower. I, it's going to be kind of close, I think. Closer than you think. Uh, 150. Oh, 150. 150. Yeah, I, I didn't think he had as long a career. I remember him having a lot of losses. Uh, well, it's because he played at the Angels. Yeah, because he was 12, 7 and 12, 12 and 12 in 2016, and then uh, 0 and 5 at the end of his career. Um, so, um, Sandy Koufax, I will definitely it? say higher. Definitely it's a safe higher. bet, dude. Safe bet. 150. From- it's, not, it's not as safe as you think. <laughs> It's not as safe as you think. 165. Yeah, I told you it was going to be close. I was really like, close. I, I was like, oh, it's really it's close. It's really close. Because yeah. even he, he like, quit early in his that's career. Why, that's well. why. That's why I was like, I don't know on that one. Like Everyone's yeah. like, oh, yeah, for sure, Mike. He, he had like really bad arthritis. He had to leave baseball pretty yeah. early. So Bob Feller, I'm going to be going. Uh, so 165 is. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm definitely going to go higher with Bob Feller. Yep, you you almost got it. Uh, two sixty six. Oof. Two sixty six and one sixty two. Now here's the toughest one. But do you know? I mean, you're a Cardinal fan. Do you know Bob Gibbs's number off the top of your head? Oh, not off the top of my head. Because that's re- this is this is like really tough here. Yeah. I, I, I don't think he has this. I don't. I think he's in the two forty fifty area. All right. So you go lower. Yeah, I'm gonna go lower. All right, good luck. I mean, I don't know. This is gonna be. I knew just looking at that, they gotta be close in numbers. Two fifty one. Oh my gosh! Wow, Michael's walking the tightrope. Michael, <laughs> Michael, you you got it. You got it from here. Yes, no it's a piece of cake from here. So Barry Zito is definitely lower. Yeah. Although uh, he he'll have more than uh, yeah one sixty five. Still yeah. impressive. Yeah. He actually had a um he kind of burned out in his career then like at the end he started like having great he went he was uh for the I think for the last uh Giants team maybe mm-hmm. 2014 he was really good for them and uh and I'll definitely go higher with uh Greg Maddox. All right. Yeah. Jeez. So um 355. Wow. Yeah, wow. Oh so my you guys tied and get like Yeah, we neither of us can be stopped. Dude. Michael, what should be our tiebreaker? Probably let's say who has the most wins on that of those three on the bench. Well, that's <laughs> that's no. I'm saying should we? I mean, I, I it, it, it'd be unfair if you pick one, and I pick one. But yes, yeah. Uh, do, do you want to? You want to do that? Do you want to? Uh, I can shift. I can shift the cards and then. Who are the three guys again? So the three guys are Dennis Eckersley. Okay. Nolan Ryan. I know. I almost want to say, can we an- anonymously and pick? Because you know, we know it's Randy one of those. Johnson. We know which. We know who it isn't of those three. Yeah, that's All that's right. true. Oh, I see what you're saying. So we'll get rid of Ex- Eckersley. Yes. Okay. Because we so, know it's not him. Oh, do you have yeah. a definitive answer? Do, who do you think has more wins, Ryan or Johnson? Do you? Do you? I mean, I just hate to say we agree on the same person. I wish we had a way to secretly vote on this. <laughs> we might agree. I, I, we I know. Not. I know who I would choose. Bro, I would if we went into extra innings. Come on now, th- like roll the dice, Kevin. Let's go. What? Let's Just do have this. Pick one at random. How I I don't understand how a three way dance is going to work here. I think no, Michael you're you're not in out. this. Get out of here. No, no, no. I meant I meant from <laughs> I the bench, it. dude. Three guys on the bench, three way dance. You know, I know. I don't. Yeah, but we but we already know who it isn't. We know it's not Eckersley. So how are we going to decide this, Jack? Okay. How about how about this? Um. How about we we um okay uh Jack I'm I'm gonna keep on shuffling the cards here. Yes, sir. Jack, I want you to, uh okay, so so I'll give I'll give Kevin the, the first pick, but you you have to pick a number between uh, either one number or one. two. One or I'll two, go. and I'm just gonna fl- I'm just number gonna two. I'll go number two. Okay, two, two? Yes, sir. So your card is Randy Johnson. All right. 
It's still close. I mean, I think my, it's Randall, my but... card is um, Nolan Ryan. So let's Michael, see. Michael, who yes. would you have picked? I would have picked uh, have... Nolan Ryan. I think I would have picked Randy. So interesting. Although, All right, because right, so... Nolan has over three hundred. I forgot. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, there you go. So Randy, Randy Nolan. Johnson. That's right. There's Nolan. Has. Ugh. 303. Yeah, but Ryan has more than that. I know that. Wow, but Ryan does have 300. Wow. Ugh, this, this game is rigged after all. 324 for yeah. Ryan. Wow. This is still pretty close. All that work for nothing. Oh, <laughs> dude. A satisfying a satisfying denouement, as they say in you know, writing. you know what that's like, Michael? What? Losing a, a playoff game on a tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Wait, yeah, wait, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do I detect yeah. sour grapes, dude? Well, no, I no, I'm just dropping. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. No, All right. See, see that's wah, wah, <laughs> wah. <laughs> All right. Let's end the show with a uh, some sad news. Um, let me uh, add this to the stream. Oh, uh, Antonio Winoki uh, passed away. Uh, Kevin, tell us yes, about Antonio Inoki. Where, where do I start, Antonio Inoki? He more or less is maybe the most famous. Well, yeah, um, one if not the most famous wrestlers ever to come out of Japan, and he tried to become famous in the United States through the brilliant idea of someone thinking that he should get in a real fight with Muhammad Ali. And hey, he did pretty good, dude. He well, here's did the thing. Good. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It was supposed to be a a, a, a work. They were gonna off. They were gonna pay a, Muhammad Ali six million dollars to put over Antonio Inoki, and and then Ali and his backers late late in the game. Wait, now we're not gonna do this. Like they were gonna do a thing where Inoki is gonna be all punched up and beat up and bloody, and Muhammad Ali was gonna back off saying, "Oh no, I don't, I don't, they're gonna stop like, no, 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 we man, you can't let him fight like this. He's all bloody, beaten up." And he was going to give Muhammad Ali one of the back brain kicks and Ali would have been down for the count. So that was the original idea. But then the Inoki backer, I'm sorry, the Ali men were like, no, 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 we can't make Inoki, we can't make Ali lose to a wrestler, you know? So they ended up doing a real fight to where they took away any advantage for Inoki to where he had to sit on his back and kick him in the legs for like 15 rounds of three minutes each. Oh, gosh. What a snooze fest. But Bro. that was the idea, trying to get Anoki to be famous in the United States. And as we talked about on the show, do you have a photo ready for the Bad News Bears? Or do you have this photo alone? There it is. Of course. There it is. Wow. There it is. So of another course. idea was, again, he's trying to get be mainstream in America as well. They put him in the Bad News Bears, go to Japan. He ends up wrestling and assaulting kids, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but did he yeah, assault... But- but look at the wrestler in the background. There's a wrestler in the corner. Yes. I mean, did Tony Curtis get beaten up? Because I know he was the coach. <laughs> Tony Cur- the fact that Tony Curtis is even in this movie. I know. It's so, it, it, you know, so the many... fact that Tony Onoki is in this movie is like, what? Yeah. So, um, and and so the, the fight you were talking about before could be considered the first mixed martial arts. Yes. Some people uh, say it is. Yeah. It, it's definitely one of the first ones where, you know, it's. Because that was the thing back when you were going, oh, my God, who would win if Mike Tyson fought Hulk Hogan or whatever in the 80s? Yeah, right. And the 70s, it was like, Anoki was the guy. That was his whole aura when he was the greatest fighter in the world. They would bring in martial artists who would put him over, you know, and they tried to get Ali to do the same thing. Didn't work out, but he never got that over in the United States. He's most known in the U.S. now for, her, you know, that snooze fest that gets Ali, but in Japan, he's still royalty. <laughs> But they also said that it, you know that that was where Ali lost his uh, yeah Ali yeah, lost, lost his legs yep. yeah yeah he, yeah he yeah. lost all he, he, he couldn't walk after that fight yeah his it legs was were, he, his yeah. legs were devastated yeah I mean he was already devastated enough from the throw in Manila like if if Joe Frazier didn't quit Ali was Ali's going ready to throw in the towel too it was a matter of that Joe Frazier's going to throw in the towel first you know. Yep. Oh God, we're we're doing a spinoff. Co- we're doing a spinoff podcast about old boxing, bro. We're doing it. <laughs> the beer. Uh, I don't know. The beer beer brawling uh, podcast. Wow. Uh, but out. but how about this? Yes, sir. I met Antonio Inoki. Oh, look at that! I actually look met that. him. Uh, I was on the photo. Ah, oh, 
Yeah, it, uh, it, actually, the, I couldn't take a photo, but oddly enough, I was taking photos. Oh, there so, you go. There you go, of course. So what happened was, uh, at the time, I was working for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, in their, I was doing like their website and a lot of their, uh, some of their stuff for online stuff. And uh, I actually went, and they were doing a show, and there was like nobody. It was just in, in the San, uh, Santa Monica Dojo. So and can so, I give a little background first? Their idea yeah, to come to the sure. United States was they actually opened a school in Santa Monica, like this little tiny place. But for wrestling, people, even modern fans would know Samoa Joe was there at points yep. helping out. Ryan Danielson. Um, Ryan Danielson was there just living it, living there, apparently. L literally living yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, literally living there. Asuka Rocky Romero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and is Antonio's, I don't remember if it's his son-in-law? Simon, I, I don't know if Simon. I Simon uh, uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, son-in-law. Yes, it's a son-in-law. But he has the name Oki, which I thought was kind of funny. He took his, right, his right. father-in-law's last name. Yeah, but he was doing his business in the U.S. and they decided, like, let's try to get in the U.S. and they're still trying to do that. But yes, a little sidebar. Go ahead, Michael. So, um, yeah, it was just like this random like place in Santa Monica. It's like a big warehouse, and it was like, but you go inside. It had like the New Japan ring in it, and actually had this big white wall with a uh, black lettering with. Antonio Noki, the uh, Anokiism and all the in in kanji. Uh, it was like it was super. It was it was immaculate. It was the place was amazing. Yeah. And um, so we used to train there, but I used to do uh, work for their website. So they they were having a show one night, and it was like they, the shows weren't well attended because it was really hard to get to. Oh yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> but then I came in. Uh, a, a, a kind of a mutual friend of ours um, says like, uh, who was running the place at the time? He goes, oh. Yeah, you know, come in here because I was taking pictures for the website. So I went into this like little office area and there's this guy and he has like a scarf like around his face and you can only see his eyes. Yeah. And I'm just like, He's I, I, ask our, I ask our friend, I'm just like, yeah, Who, I, is this? And he goes and he told me to take a picture, but it was in like in the dark. I couldn't even take a picture. And I was like. Why is but he hiding I, his face? And he was hiding his face, but no one would have known that he was. Right, there. I'm saying, why is he hiding his face? But he was. That, that's how, like, kind of kayfabe he was. He was like, oh he just didn't want anybody to know he was there. I'm just like, oh my god. There's like 40 people there, and you know they yeah. all would know, but it's most. Yeah, no one's gonna care. That's yes. Uh, each knee Santa. Um. But the, the, yeah, it, slapping people. That's what you need. Oh, I, I, I was super. It was like, whoa, this is like, yeah. like wrestling royalty. But it also, oh, yeah. he, sure. I mean, he was. Think of like you know when we talk about like The Rock, oh, yeah. um, running for president, like Antonio Noki basically did that. He was a, he was as popular as Hulk Hogan. Um, he actually started. He was like Vince McMahon. He started his own promotion, but but he was also like. He came in with Baba, you know, in the early 60s. Uh, Trained by Dozon. Ricky Dozon. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like, the, you know, and so like his his legacy in pro wrestling. And you could have a lot of fun just looking up the stuff he did outside of wrestling because he ended up actually joining the Japanese Senate. Yes. If you want some fun, uh, go to YouTube and search up Antonio Noki, um, Iraq. There, apparently there's a story where there was like 40 or 50 Japanese citizens trapped in Iraq when Saddam Hussein was taking over uh, in like 1990, right before the Gulf War. And it shows this whole story about Anoki going over there and more or less con converting himself to Muslim to help free the Japanese people who are trapped in, in Iraq, it's including crazy. bringing wrestlers over there and putting a wrestling show in Iraq for Saddam Hussein and other like Iraqi uh, people in power. As crazy as that sounds, yeah. and he eventually did it. He got those Jap he got those people out of Japan, out of Iraq, and back to Japan. Insane. Saved yeah. a lot of lives, bro. Yeah. Saved yeah. a lot of lives, dude. And and uh, there's yeah, a dark I, I side, of the, yeah. the dark I, side I, of the I, ring yeah. for the the for the Korea uh, collision yeah. in Korea. Um, uh, Ed mentioned that too. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, was he not he has a complicated uh, legacy. That's for that's for sure. He got in um, trouble for the embezzlement, to say the least. Yeah. So, but that's uh, what he's forgotten about, I'm sure, because you know. Yes, He's looked but hey, he was in Bad News Bears Go to Japan. That's, so that's right. That's all you need to know. That that I ties in like, with baseball for us. And I do have to <laughs> like that Chico's Bell Bond is sending those kids to Japan. That's very that nice. <laughs> oh, What a great sponsor. That. We need Chico's Bell Bonds to sponsor us. Yes. I, we need to let Freedom Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Say that. <laughs> 
Well, if you like what we're doing here uh, at the Baseball Brew Crew Podcast, consider becoming a Patreon member, uh, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. The cool thing is if you become a new Patreon subscriber, uh, you don't have to wait till the beginning of the month. Uh, whatever date that you joined, that's when it comes around. And you, Oh, uh, it's not the first of the month anymore? They, they changed it. They changed oh, it. Oh, finally. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. That's good to know. Uh, we are on this, all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and uh, Jackie Martinley's favorite, TikTok. Yeah. Um, uh, what are the shows for this weekend? Angelo has one coming up on Saturday. I'm not sure what he's opening, but uh, I know that you have some beer and breaks and uh, hazy history coming up, right? Well, tomorrow, um, I don't have my bag. My bag cards me, so it'll make a surprise. I know tomorrow I'm going to be at Radiant for trivia, hanging out with friends. So I'm going to try to do it at 7 o'clock when I get over there. Pull out some cards, open a beer at Radiant, and just do a quick pint and packs. Probably just do one pack to go through it quickly. And Cowboy Jack, should we attempt? Jack, you know, unfortunately, you know, we had a hard weekend. You know, Jack and I were we're living the life as you will. We couldn't get our show in. Do you still want to tackle that? Yes, player Fidel Castro. Yeah, this you were, Sunday. All right, this Sunday, I will try to give you an approximate time here because I know I've. I'm doing the, the shoot work, brother. Yeah, Maybe just the, keep 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 an eye on our Instagram. On I'm gonna Sunday. say seven o'clock. I'm supposed to work eight thirty to six. Let's say seven o'clock. Perfect. All right. Right. Pacific. Oh. Send me a Pacific. We'll Perfect. talk about some guy named Fidel Castro who played baseball in Cuba <laughs> in the fifties. You probably never heard of him, dude. You probably well, Jack sure him. did. When I mentioned him last week. He said, "Oh, he's a shortstop," and I'm just like, <laughs> "Yes, yeah, probably." <laughs> hey, he's a pitcher. But I just want to, dude, I just want to thank everybody out in the chat, dude. Thank everybody that watches and please, please, please tell a friend, get them involved in the show. We need some, we need to pump up those rookie subscriber numbers, baby. Hit that button, please. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we will see you next Tuesday with another baseball brew crew podcast. Thanks for joining everyone. Good night. Take care.